The Elgin Marbles, also known as the Parthenon Marbles, are a collection of classical Greek marble sculptures, made mostly by Phidias and his assistants, inscriptions, and architectural pieces that were originally part of the Temple of the Parthenon and other buildings on the Acropolis of Athens. Thomas Bruce, 7th Earl of Elgin obtained in 1801 a controversial permit from the Sublime Port, which then ruled Greece. From 1801 to 1812, Elgin's agents removed about half of the surviving sculptures of the Parthenon, as well as sculptures from the Propylia and Erechtheum. The marbles were transported by sea to Britain. In Britain, the acquisition of the collection was supported by some, five, while others likened Elgin's actions to vandalism or looting. Following a public debate in Parliament and the subsequent exoneration of Elgin, the marbles were purchased from Elgin by the British government in 1816 and were passed to the British Museum, where they are on display in the purpose-built Duvian Gallery. After gaining its independence from the Ottoman Empire, Greece began major projects for the restoration of the country's monuments, and has expressed its disapproval of Elgin's removal of the marbles from the Acropolis and the Parthenon, which is regarded as one of the world's greatest cultural monuments. Greece disputes the subsequent purchase of the marbles by the British government and urges the return of the marbles to Greece for their unification. In 2014, UNESCO offered to mediate between Greece and the United Kingdom in resolving the dispute of the Elgin marbles, although this was later turned down by the UK. In November of 1798 the Earl of Elgin was appointed as Ambassador Extraordinary and Minister Plenipotentiary of His Britannic Majesty to the sublime port of Selim III, Sultan of Turkey, Greece was then part of the Ottoman Empire. Before his departure to take up the post he had approached officials of the British government to inquire if they would be interested in employing artists to take casts and drawings of the sculptured portions of the Parthenon. According to Lord Elgin, the answer of the government was entirely negative. Lord Elgin decided to carry out the work and employed artists to take casts and drawings under the supervision of the Neapolitan court painter Giovanni Lusseri. According to a Turkish local, marble sculptures that fell were burned to obtain lime for building. Although the original intention was only to document the sculptures, in 1801 Lord Elgin began to remove material from the Parthenon and its surrounding structures under the supervision of Lucery. The excavation and removal was completed in 1812 at a personal cost of around £70,000. Elgin intended the marbles for display in the British Museum, selling them to the British government for less than the cost of bringing them to Britain and declining higher offers from other potential buyers, including Napoleon. Description Main Articles, Parthenon Frieze and Metopes of the Parthenon The Parthenon marbles acquired by Elgin include some 21 figures from the statuary from the east and west pediments. 15 of an original 92 metop panels depicting battles between the Lapids and the Centaurs, as well as 247 feet, or 75 meters of an original 524 feet or 160 meters, of the Parthenon frieze which decorated the horizontal course set above the interior architrave of the temple. As such, they represent more than half of what now remains of the surviving sculptural decoration of the Parthenon. Elgin's acquisitions also included objects from other buildings on the Athenian Acropolis, a caryatid from Erechtheum, four slabs from the parapet frieze of the Temple of Athena Nike, and a number of other architectural fragments of the Parthenon, Propylaea, Erechtheum, the Temple of Athena Nike, and the treasury of Atreus. Legality of the removal from Athens, as the Acropolis was still an Ottoman military fort, 
Elgin required special permission to enter the site, including the Parthenon and the surrounding buildings. He stated that he had obtained from the Sultan a firman to allow his artists access to the site. The original document is now lost, however, a translated Italian copy made at the time still survives. Vassilis Dimitriades, professor of Turkish studies at the University of Crete, has argued that any expert in Ottoman diplomatic language can easily ascertain that the original of the document which has survived was not a firman. The document was recorded in an appendix of an 1816 Parliamentary Committee report. The committee permission had convened to examine the request by Elgin asking the British government to purchase the marbles. The report said that the document in the appendix was an accurate translation in English of an Ottoman firman dated July 1801. In Elgin's view it amounted to an Ottoman authorization to remove the marbles. The committee was told that the original document was given to Ottoman officials in Athens in 1801. Researchers have so far failed to locate it despite the fact that the Ottoman archives in Istanbul still hold a number of similar documents dating from the same period. The parliamentary record shows that the Italian copy of the Furman was not presented to the committee by Elgin himself but by one of his associates the clergyman Rev. Philip Hunt. Hunt, who at the time resided in Bedford, was the last witness to appear before the committee and stated that he had in his possession an Italian translation of the Ottoman original. He went on to explain that he had not brought the document, because, upon leaving Bedford, he was not aware that he was to testify as a witness. The English document in the parliamentary report was filed by Hunt, but the committee was not presented with the Italian translation in Hunt's possession. William Street Clare, a contemporary biographer of Lord Elgin, said he possessed Hunt's Italian document and vouches for the accuracy of the English translation. The committee report states on page 69, signed with a signet, said Abdullah Kamikan, However, the document presented to the committee was an English translation of this purported translation into Italian of the original Furman, and had neither signet nor signature on it, a fact corroborated by Street Clare. The document allowed Elgin and his team to erect scaffolding so as to make drawings and moldings in chalk or gypsum as well as to measure the remains of the ruined buildings and excavate the foundations which may have become covered in the, gyaja, meaning gravel, debris, and dot 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 that when they wished to take away, quash, meaning some or a few, pieces of stone with old inscriptions or figures thereon, that no opposition be made thereto. The interpretation of these lines has been questioned even by non-restitutionalists, particularly the word quash, which in modern language should be translated as a few but can also mean any. According to non-restitutionalists, further evidence that the removal of the sculptures by Elgin was approved by the Ottoman authorities is shown by a second firman which was required for the shipping of the marbles from the Piraeus. Despite the controversial Furman, many have questioned the legality of Elgin's actions. A study by Professor David Rudenstein of the Benjamin N. Cardozo School of Law concluded that the premise that Elgin obtained legal title to the marbles, which he then transferred to the British government, is certainly not established and may well be false. Rudenstein's argumentation is partly based on a translation discrepancy he noticed between the surviving Italian document and the English text submitted by Hunt to the Parliamentary Committee. The text from the committee report reads We therefore have written this letter to you, and expedited it by Mr. Philip Hunt, an English gentleman, secretary of the aforesaid ambassador but according to the street clare italian document the actual wording is we therefore have written this letter to you and expedited it by in in rudenstein's view 
This substitution of Mr. Philip Hunt with the initials in N can hardly be a simple mistake. He further argues that the document was presented after the committee's insistence that some form of Ottoman written authorization for the removal of the marbles be provided, a fact known to Hunt by the time he testified. Thus, according to Rudenstein, Hunt put himself in a position in which he could simultaneously vouch for the authenticity of the document and explain why he alone had a copy of it 15 years after he surrendered the original to Ottoman officials in Athens. On two earlier occasions, Elgin stated that the Ottomans gave him written permissions more than once, but that he had retained none of them. Hunt testified on March 13. And one of the questions asked was did you ever see any of the written permissions which were granted to, Lord Elgin, for removing the marbles from the Temple of Minerva? To which Hunt answered yes, adding that he possessed an Italian translation of the original Furman. Nonetheless, he did not explain why he had retained the translation for fifteen years, whereas Elgin, who had testified two weeks earlier, knew nothing about the existence of any such document. English travel writer Edward Daniel Clark, an eyewitness, wrote that the Dister, the Ottoman official on the scene, attempted to stop the removal of the meetups but was bribed to allow it to continue. In contrast, Professor John Merriman, Schweitzer Professor of Law and also Professor of Art at Stanford University, Putting aside the discrepancy presented by Arudenstein, argues that since the Ottomans had controlled Athens since 1460, their claims to the artifacts were legal and recognizable. The Ottoman Sultan was grateful to the British for repelling Napoleonic expansion, and the Parthenon marbles had no sentimental value to him. Further, that written permission exists in the form of the Furman which is the most formal kind of permission available from that government, and that Elgin had further permission to export the marbles, legalizes his, and therefore the British Museum's, claim to the marbles. He does note, though, that the clause concerning the extent of Ottoman authorization to remove the marbles is at best ambiguous adding that the document provides slender authority for the massive removals from the Parthenon. The reference to taking away any pieces of stone seems incidental, intended to apply to objects found while excavating. That was certainly the interpretation privately placed on the Furman by several of the Elgin party, including Lady Elgin. Publicly, however, a different attitude was taken and the work of dismantling the sculptures on the Parthenon and packing them for shipment to England began in earnest. In the process, Elgin's party damaged the structure, leaving the Parthenon not only denuded of its sculptures but further ruined by the process of removal. It is certainly arguable that Elgin exceeded the authority granted in the Furman in both respects. The issue of Furmans of this nature along with universally required bribes, was not unusual at this time, in 1801 for example, Edward Clark and his assistant Cripps, obtained an authorization from the governor of Athens for the removal of a statue of Demeter which was at Eleusis, with the intervention of Italian artist Giovanni Luceri who was Lord Elgin's assistant at the time. Prior to Clark, the statue had been discovered in 1676 by the traveler George Wheeler and since then several ambassadors had submitted unsuccessful applications for its removal, but Clark had been the one to remove the statue by force, after bribing the Wywoad of Athens and obtaining a firman, despite the objections and a riot, of the local population who unofficially and against the traditions of the iconoclastic church, worshipped the statue as the uncanonized Saint Demetra. The people would adorn the statue with garlands, and believe that the goddess was able to bring fertility to their fields and that the removal of the statue would cause that benefit to disappear. 
Clark also removed other marbles from Greece such as a statue of Pan, a figure of Eros, a comic mask, various reliefs and funerary steel, amongst others. Clark donated these to the University of Cambridge and subsequently in 1803 the statue of Demeter was displayed at the library. The collection was later moved to the Fitzwilliam Museum where it formed one of the two main collections of the institution.